All right. Jeff Denby is our next speaker. He is the co-founder of the Renewal Workshop, a company offering industry-wide solutions to optimize the value of resources invested in apparel. The Renewal Workshop partners with apparel brands to refurbish their unsellable returns and excess inventory at a state-of-the-art factory in, you guessed it, Oregon. This is the Oregon block. Um, and uh, Jeff is here today to present a circular economy for apparel. The reasons we have waste in the apparel industry is the design of the industry itself. The renewal workshop leverages technology, systems thinking, and marketplace drivers to start to evolve the industry towards a more regenerative model where resources are wisely used. Welcome up, Jeff. There you go. The blue one is your, is your changer. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for having me. Um, so I'm Jeff Denby. Uh, I'm the co-founder of the Renewal Workshop. And I actually live here in, in Oakland. Uh, but uh, our factory is up in Cascade Locks, uh, Oregon. Um, so I don't think I need to tell you that the apparel industry's business model is uh, pretty much a disaster for the planet, for our cities, and uh, for waste in general. Uh, it's a antiquated 20th century linear business model that functions on a take, make, use, dump uh, philosophy that believes that resources are completely, um, uh, will last forever. Um, it contributes to the 10 and a half million tons of apparel that goes to landfill every year in this country, which is the fastest growing component of municipal solid waste. Um, in New York City alone, by 2020, it'll cost taxpayers over $100 million just to collect and dispose of apparel, um, and that's just in that city. So um, we have a huge problem with apparel when it comes to waste. Uh, brands and retailers are the ones that exist inside of this and, and, and really uh, uh, promote this linear uh, system. And so uh, when brands get something here, all of 97% of product is manufactured overseas. When it arrives in the US, and they sell it, they do not want it back. Uh, it flows back to them in all sorts of ways. My co-founder, Nicole Bassett, and I have worked in the apparel industry for our entire careers, mostly overseas in factories in India and China, Vietnam, uh, trying our hardest to make the product better, uh, organic, fair trade. We've worked in worker rights overseas, uh, only to discover that when it gets here, it ends up going uh, to landfill uh, because the shirt is missing a button or there is a broken hem, perhaps a, the box got wet in shipping, uh, someone got makeup on it uh, in a uh, fitting room, uh, and now with the proliferation of uh, e-commerce, free shipping both ways, customers are um, window shopping, buying 10 items with the uh, intention of keeping two, uh, and that product ends up going back to the brand, uh, probably not uh, nicely in the package with the UPC in the right place or with the tags. Uh, and in January and February, the flow back of product to brands into their warehouses is an absolute tsunami of product. Uh, and there's a small amount of workers that are dealing with that product. It all ends up in boxes kind of like this in the back of the warehouse. The reality is, is that the majority of this product builds up. I had one retailer called the Lava Dome of product. And uh, they eventually just write it off and shred it and send it to landfill. So I think we can agree that a shirt missing a button is not landfill. So a lot of people say, well, wait, aren't there systems in place to deal with all of this? Well, there are, um, but uh, donation for brands is really tricky. There's a lot of de-branding that needs to happen. Uh, many brands won't allow their product to go into um, certain uh, charities. Uh, they don't want uh, their product seen in certain areas. That's just the reality of that, of that business. Um, and so in many, charities also don't have the ability to deal with uh, containers filled with mixed product. They're looking for very specific product and the brands don't have the time to help um, sort of get that um, to, the, to the right place. So a lot of it ends up going to landfill. There is an overseas market, um, secondary market for product. The East African community has banned the import of Western used clothing. The reality is Africans don't want our broken, dirty, damaged clothing anymore either. And they don't have waste systems in place to deal with the stuff that um, doesn't end up, uh, that, they don't, that they don't want. Um, so that, that majority of it just, the simple solution is shred it and send it to landfill. Uh, this creates actually a financial pain inside for brands. They have to deal with the, the uh, management cost of constantly dealing with this buildup and no systematic solution for them. There's warehousing, shipping costs, and disposal costs. 
So this is the um, circular economy butterfly map from the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. I'm sure many of you have seen these before. But what we're really focused on at the Renewal Workshop is those inner lobes, that maintenance, reuse, redistribution, and refurbish and remanufacture. It is all about creating a circular economy for apparel. That's what we're really trying to enable, and we're really partnering with the brands. So at the Renewal Workshop, this is how we work with brands and retailers. We partner with them to take all of their unsellable returns and their excess inventory uh, that they've written, off, they've written off. So they send this product to our factory in Cascade Locks, Oregon. And here we have developed a proprietary process for sorting the product as well as the operating system that manages the um, whole flow of the product through the factory. Um, it took us about two years to basically write um, and customize software because there is no circular ERP or PLM or warehouse management systems that exist. Um, so we had to create our own. We, have a, we sort the product, we clean the product, uh, and we can repair anything that's wrong with it, so to the point where you would no, never know there was anything wrong with it in the first place. There's a partnership with the brands. Um, we certify it to the original quality of the brands. And along the way, we collect data on absolutely every product that flows um, through the factory. Anything that we can't renew goes to upcycling or recycling um, R&D. And then on the product that we produce uh, is we call renewed apparel, which is a whole new category of um, consumer product. Uh, and it's sold direct to consumer at renewalworkshop.com or we sell it back to the brand so that they can own the resale of their own uh, product. Re-commerce has become a multi-billion dollar industry very quickly here in the US in the apparel industry. Um, so we're helping brands um, get behind this. We are the first renewal facility um, like this. We are a for-profit business. This is all about um, driving the brands to own this. Um, like I said about we clean every single product. We use um, a technology, uh, we use liquid CO2. So all of the product is cleaned in a liquid CO2 cleaning. It gets the product incredibly um, clean, can pull out smoke, mold, body hair, oils, anything. Um, and like we barcode every single product and then we're able to calculate the impact data associated with every single product as it moves through our system. Uh, we have about 15 brand partners right now. We're in pilot with uh, like eight or 10 or something right now as well. Um, one of the brand partners that we have is one of the largest apparel holding companies in the world and this May will be launching their uh, renewed uh, product category to the world. It's one of the brands is one of the largest in the world. And so um, the reality is, is that they're not here for the sustainability, they're here for the money. And that is a huge uh, driver to be able to transform this a concept of waste back into a profit um, driver. And so that's really what we've been focused on is enabling um, these brands to take control and ownership of the product. Um, and, and really think about the reuse and the re-commerce as a new opportunity for them. Like we always say, you don't need to just make more products than you made last year and try to sell more than you last year. Why don't you use the resources that you've already um, contributed or, or made? So, um, like I said, we track the impact of every single product that flows through um, our system. 60% uh, of the environmental impact of a garment actually comes from the um, production of the initial raw materials to make it in the first place. So this concept of renewing the product and extending the life of it has a massive environmental savings. Uh, last year was really one of our first big years in, um, with a number of brands. Uh, and we diverted over 42,000 pounds of apparel from landfill. We're on track to more than triple that um, this year. Uh, the savings um, that, go, that we um, were able to recognize from renewing product was the equivalent of uh, burning 25,000 gallons of gasoline, 36 million gallons of water, and we saved over 72,000 pounds of toxic chemicals. So we're really at just the precipice of um, this concept of renewal and really working deep inside of the industry to figure out how we take this concept of circular economy forward. Um, we're here in phase one in this idea of renewal and um, where we really are heading is this idea of being able to take garments that exist today and recycle those back ultimately into the raw materials, the fibers, yarns, and fabrics that can make garments in the future. 
Right now, about 75% of the market is cotton poly. There is absolutely no way to um, recycle that. There are some technologies in basically in lab stage, but nothing to an industrial scale um, at all. And so it's kind of amazing that we have no ability to do this. And the market in the apparel industry is moving more and more and more towards blended fabrics. Um, Levi's top selling denim now has 1% spandex in it for a little bit of stretch, which makes those jeans now 100% not recyclable, whereas before their product was 100% cotton and was amazingly recyclable. So the market, the customer is driving us to blended fabrics. Um, we're not going to get away from it, so we have to find ways to invest in technology that is going to... Um, think about how, how do we transform those blends back into the fibers, yarns, and fabrics. And somebody asked about fast fashion earlier. Fast and fashion are, are not the problem. It's about resource use. And so if we could find technology that would allow us to make new product quickly from old product, then that becomes an amazing circular economy where we're just reusing resources over and over again. And that's what we're trying to drive towards. So thank you so much. Quick questions? Right. Here. Hi, good morning. Thank you so much. I was wondering if you have any suggestions where we could go locally to recycling textiles? And I'm sure that might be a goal one day for you guys to take municipal waste and reuse, but. Yeah, right now we're really set up to deal with the mass amount of products that are coming from, like containers filled with products coming from brands. Um, but we've definitely heard a lot of um, interest from consumers wanting to be able to send their product directly to us. And so there's a program that we're working on that hopefully we'll be able to, it requires a little bit of changes in our processes and technology, but we'll be able to start accepting product directly from consumers probably this fall. Um, so that will be a solution. And then we are talking to a number of cities um, who have basically been like, hello, can you help us with this problem? And um, yeah, so it definitely is something that we we like have become a solution really quickly. Um, and we're, you know, we're looking at all the options to help get more and more product directed towards us. I hope to be succinct, but at the same time, uh, clear. This is, you're right, this is about buttons falling off. This is about, I, I can't tell you the number of jackets I have where the only thing wrong with it is the zipper. Is there an ISO or similar standard, a gold standard for the production of garments that, that thoughtful, uh, uh, environmental friendly manufacturers could follow? And is that something we need? There are standards for quality. It's called AQL standard, and most of them, AQL is a very technical, deep in the weeds, sort of um, at the factory, the way that they um, uh, sample product and get it approved. Uh, but the reality is that, like, no, there's not. Every single garment is manufactured differently. It's sewn by people at sewing machines. Um, there are no robots making clothes. It, there's, there is no standard. Every fabric is different. So it's, it's an industry that's really difficult to get our hands around because there's absolutely zero consistency. And so it's, it's really challenging. I think that's why reuse is really one of the biggest things we can do. Um, and, and we have to focus, we've really focused on the systems and the technology that allow us to do that um, as efficiently as possible. What are the, what's the pricing on your clothing? Is it like really expensive? I mean, you got all these costs. I always want to know. <laughs> yeah, so um, that's a really, yeah, that's a really good point. So. Um, all of the clothing that we sell, the renewed apparel, is priced at 30% off the original uh, retail price. And so um, you're getting a great deal from a branded product that you um, know and love and often people covet. Uh, and it's been cleaned and fixed and, and, and certified to the original brand standard. We're like the Apple refurbished or the BMW certi pr certified pre-owned of, of a, the apparel industry. Um, so you get 30% off, but... Um, yeah, I mean, there is, that's what's really, we worked hard on the business model for this, and it, it does work, um, and it works in partnership with the brands, and it also gives the brands, if they want to buy it back, um, a margin to sell it back to the consumer. So there is a lot of margin there, um, and that's what we've worked hard on in developing an efficient system. Great. Thanks so much. <clears throat>